Welcome to my basic Marin guide. In this guide, I will be breaking down Marin as a unit, so let's jump into it. Marin's growth rates are 55% HP, 25% strength and magic, 40% dex, 50% speed, 30% defense and res, 25% luck, and 10% build. So just looking at her bases, she has standout dex and speed, she has decent defense and res, she has okay health growth, and 10% build is not bad. She does have kind of lower strength and magic, so if you want her to be dealing damage, you're going to want to put her on something that will fix her strength and also take advantage of her speed. And her passive, Nightly Escort, when two or more female allies are within two spaces, grants hit slash avoid plus five to unit and those allies. So any number of females, when there are two or more, will benefit from Nightly Escort. So... Luckily for us, this game is full of high tier, really powerful female units, making this one of the better passives in the game. In terms of level of investment, Marin is a pretty low investment unit. You can leave her on Wolf Knight and you need to fix her strength so that she can consistently deal damage, or you can switch her to Paladin or Wyvern. There's also other classes she can be good on, but she generally either needs a second seal or an emblem ring and some basic upgrades. So what are Marin's best classes? Wolf Knight isn't a bad class to leave her on. It does suffer long term because it only has 30% strength growth. She has 25% strength growth. So generally, I want something with more strength growth. I usually put her on Wyvern Knight. Uh, Griffin Knight would have a kind of similar problem. She would have slightly better strength growth on Griffin Knight. But I'd say Sword Axe Wyvern is pretty good. She already has swords unlocked. And all she needs is axes from Ike, so she can quickly get that, and then you can get her on Wyvern right away. She can also be potentially on magic classes, because her her like strength and magic are similar, but I don't really recommend it. For other physical classes, you can't go wrong with things like Hero. She has good speed, so she could actually be a decent hero. Uh, she also could go on to Halberdier, if you want. Um, I don't think it takes advantage of her speed because halberdier is great for high strength units who can't double but she could be a decent halberdier warrior is always a decent option so like the kind of generic infantry classes that are good on most physical units that also improve strength growth so like warrior halberdier hero uh, berserker could be useful just to fix her strength but she's going to hit dex cap almost immediately it has a low dex cap so something to keep in mind Sniper is an interesting option for her. Uh, it's not something that I would personally run, but it wouldn't be terrible. It wouldn't deal that much damage, so I don't really recommend it. Same thing with Bow Knight. Uh, General and Great Knight, I don't recommend. Though potentially with Speed Taker, she could be a good Great Knight. This would allow her to be like a bruiser off tank that can also double most enemies. So with Speed Taker and Speed plus 3 to 5, you could easily double on Great Knight, which is interesting. So you could immediately make her a sword axe Great Knight and she could use swords. That allows her to wield silver sword with, with no weight penalty, but if you ran Lance, she could wield silver Lance because of the build. So even though she does lose speed, she gains build, but honestly Wolf Knight or Wyvern, probably better than Great Knight. Paladin would be decent on her. It'd be very similar to Wyvern. So you could run Paladin, it would be fine. So I would say the absolute best classes, uh, potentially Wolf Knight with a build, Wyvern, maybe Warrior. A lot of people run Warrior spam. It's, I mean, it's a solid option. It fixes, it gives you tons of strength. It can still double on a fast unit. It has good build, it has good growths. I don't personally like it. It's, it doesn't really do it for me. I don't like Axe units unless they're Panette, <laughs> so. So yeah, I would say just like Wyvern, to be honest, for the best class. I think that is her best class, is Wyvern. Sword Lance Wyvern would be better, but it takes a few chapters before you unlock Lances. But you can immediately reclass her into, you know, Sword Axe, because you get Ike at the end of chapter 13, which is when you get her. Let's go over skills Marin can run. Now, you could run Strength if you want to stay on Daggers, if you want to increase the damage of Daggers. With the new well, you can reasonably hit strength plus three and potentially even strength plus four, which would increase her damage output with daggers, but they're definitely better options. 
holdout would be a decent thing to run if you want her to be an off tank that can at least survive a single combat or potentially two combats with enemies. So getting holdout could be decent. Uh, build is usually something she doesn't need because I usually run swords or daggers on her, and I do recommend that. So she doesn't need build at all. Uh, vantage could be used. Depends on if you're running some kind of crit build or not. Or you can one round and counterattack. Canter is decent. I do think there are better options for her. I don't think she really needs Canter. She can usually tank a hit. So if she's going to be on most of her, the classes she wants to be on, she generally doesn't need Canter, but Canter is a solid option. Uh, momentum, I don't recommend getting. Nothing in Celica, nothing in Byleth. Uh, Corrin, you could run Draconic Hex, but I'd put it on a different unit. Dual Assist, she's not really going to be taking advantage of being a backup, I would say. Uh, Wrath could be interesting for crit builds, so you could run that if you want. I don't really recommend it. Uh, Gentility, I don't really recommend, but Lunar Brace could be useful on any class she's on. You can actually see that I actually have Lunar Brace. On Lin, you can't go wrong with Speed. Speed and Speed Taker, I would say universally, are good on almost every unit with a few exceptions. So getting Speed plus 3 and Speed Taker, or just getting Speed Taker and then eventually Speed plus 3 and then getting up to speed plus four, speed plus five, you're looking at an insanely fast unit that scales well into endgame, that doubles consistently, and if you don't double consistently, you, just, you start getting kills, last hitting, they get speed taker going, and then you're crazy, and you'll just kill, like, kill everything, so. All right, so definitely speed taker, speed plus three to five. Lunar Brace, I would say, are the main thing she wants. Lunar Brace, honestly, is is better than strength plus three because it penetrates armor so it allows you to hit things with high defense and it scales your damage and most enemies have like 20 to 30 defense so you're looking at like two to three points of damage or i'm sorry it's 20 percent, so it's actually more than that so you're looking at like four to six extra points of damage against pretty much everything <laughs> late game so this is where it shines uh here's the particular build i'm running on this wolf nightmare she has roy for holdout and the damage increase from Roy's strength. She also has Lunar Brace for armor penetration and speed for speediness. So Wolf Knight is very fast. So in this case, I just needed to solve her damage problem. She had the speed covered because Wolf Knight has very high speed on top of having high speed growth. So her speed's gonna snowball. So she just really needs speed plus three and then a huge damage fixing ability like Lunar Brace or Erica. And then Roy also further fixes her damage. And, and she's only at bond level two. So if she gets her bond level up to 10, she'll be, you know, plus a few more points of strength. So right now she's plus two strength for being on Roy. So if you want to run her on Wolf Knight, this is kind of a build that I recommend running. It's very solid. You also get Hobble, which is nice. Uh, her bases are decent on here. Roy also gives health. So the health plus the holdouts. And of course, when you pop Rise Above, you deal more damage. You also get more movement, which is cool. And you have access to crowd control. So it's a very good... Like, Wolf Knight is viable on her, and it is, I would say, just as good as Wyvern when built. Uh, before you run Roy, I would recommend putting Erica on her so that she can penetrate armor with Lunar Brace. She will double, but she'll have tr like pro problems dealing damage. I do recommend upgrading the Silver Daggers. Uh, so this is the equipment that she needs on Wolf Knight. Literally just one thing. Now, you can run other things. It is a Sword Dagger class, so you could run Armor Slayer. You can run Worm Slayer, so if you want her to be able to smack armors, Armor Slayer is a good option. If you want her to be able to basically hard counter enemy wyverns, you can give her a Worm Slayer. Those are nice utility things. You could give her a Killing Edge with a Crit Engraving if you want. You could also give her like a Silver Sword, but I would say Silver Dagger is kind of expensive to upgrade and you probably should just focus on that. So now I'm going to show the other build I'm running on her. Here is an example of a Marin wyvern so you essentially just reclass her into sword axe wyvern immediately you unlock axes through ike you hand her a silver sword you upgrade it you can engrave it it doesn't need an engraving but it does help uh, and eventually she will be i mean she'll be pretty really good right out of the gate but the silver sword is good uh, you can see she has utility weapons so she has a pole axe to smack enemy horses for huge damage, and she also has an armor slayer to generally one round enemy armor. So she has two utility weapons and a main weapon. The silver axe, there's just an extra weapon I just threw on her, she doesn't need it. 
So it's just kind of nice. She can actually double a lot of things despite, you know, the weight. I did put Sigurd on her, so this is more of like a dive Marin. Sigurd helps with build. It also helps with tanking a little bit, but mostly the build and the canter is what you use it for. And she also has speed taker and speed plus three. So she is really fast right now, but as she kills things, she doubles like sword masters and enemy wolf knights. So this is like a super fast, hyper aggressive. Honestly, I do think this is better than wolf knight by a huge margin. It's easier to use. It deals more damage up front and you can slowly upgrade the silver sword to plus three and it won't cost you that much in terms of resources. She doesn't even really need an engraving, but in this case, I was able to throw leaf engraving on it because she has Sigurd, so it makes sense. Um, one of the things you'll find with engravings, if you're not running the DLC, is that a lot of your units are going to be competing for engravings, and generally, depending on who you want to give those engravings to and why, like your unit might be out in engraving. Uh, but without an engraving on Silver Sword with Speed Taker, she will put it in work and be good. And it does not take that much to get her to speed taker. If you just put her on emblem ring and she levels up five times, she's at speed taker. Or if you just hand her 500 SP from the SP well, you're on speed taker. So she can get online in terms of speed taker very quickly. And speed plus three only costs, I think like 500 SP. So it's not that expensive. And you can get speed taker and speed plus three very early. So... Once you get that on her, she's probably set for the rest of the game and doesn't need any more SP or SP books or like special treatment. And then eventually you can get her speed plus four as she naturally hits 500 SP and then she'll be even faster. Speed also scales a void, so it's very useful to have. It's just one of the best stats in the game. So this is the other build I recommend running. I would say those are the two that I, like I personally use those ones the most. I, I, I mostly put her on Wyvern. Though, I would say her on Wyvern, I think that's her best class. Her on Paladin is decent. I'm running that in another run. I can show that. So here is an example of a Chapter 15 Marin. She's still not finished being built. She has 1,000 SP. I got her speed plus 3 early. Uh, what I would do is once I get another 1,000 SP book, because I'm doing 4-star well donations, eventually I will get another one. Uh, I'm going to pump her with sp books and then she will get speed taker but essentially what she wants is just a silver sword and an armor slayer you can upgrade both of those and those will be her main weapons now the idea behind her on paladin is it gives her high speed growth as well as like decent strength growth that's 15 percent on both so you kind of get to some degree the best of both worlds where you get strength and speed so arguably speed taker might not be the best thing for her long term or if you are going to run something, maybe you just skip speed plus three, go for speed taker, and then go for something like Lunar Brace, which that to build that, <laughs> that's a total of 5k SP. So that's like some heavy well favoritism. Now, if you just want to get like speed plus three and Lunar Brace on her, that can be good. But at this point in the game, there aren't that many emblem rings. There's only like four, and I'm running them on different units. Arguably, this general Pranette thing, I'm going to make a video on this eventually, but uh, I don't think she even needs Ike, to be honest, so she could probably take Ike from Panette right now. Uh, but this is the build. This is like a work in progress. Marin, she's still good. She still doubles most things. She's just lacking speed taker right now, which is definitely hurting her. Um, so for the equipment, it's just Silver Sword and Armor Slayer. Pretty simple. Pretty straightforward. I think that's it for this one. As, as far as... Well, I'll go over Engage Rings really quickly. Um, she can make good use of Ike on any of her builds to take half damage. This allows her to tank critical weaknesses like enemies with Elwind, uh, enemies with bows, things like this. This guarantees you can tank it by having the damage and with her speed, she won't get doubled. So Ike is actually really good on flyers for that reason. Roy is really good for the, a similar reason. Erica is really good for armor penetration. Lin can be good if you want to give someone early speed taker, but I usually put it on my mages. So I usually run Ivy. Uh, I think that I think Mage Knight Anna and Sage Ivy are like going to be my two standard things now because you can easily get her Speed Taker, and then you get you just eventually get Anna Speed Taker as well, and then switch lid off of her long term. I'm starting to run Yunaka. We'll see how it goes. She's doing okay. Her damage is kind of falling off a little bit. 
Um, and it's hard to upgrade the Silver Dagger because I'm upgrading everyone's weapons, so it's hard to specifically focus on one unit. I still have to turn this Alfire into a Bolganone. So there's, you know, the Silver is hotly contested. There's no, <laughs> no easy way to, to get these upgrades. But yeah, Marin's a solid unit. Um, I'd put her in high A tier, potentially S tier on Wyvern. On Paladin, it, like similar, Wolf Knight, similar, like high A tier. Pretty easy to build, really good passive. Solid solid bruiser unit that can deal damage and double. Um, maybe not so much a bruiser, but she can tank a hit or two. Like she can tank like one to two enemies on average, which is nice. And with emblem rings like Roy and Ike, she could tank like two to three. So she can be a flyer who can kind of tank, kind of be a bruiser in that way. Uh, Lucina I don't recommend. I, I think Lucina is best on a Leer for bond shield and for the avoid this is a weird build this avoid build. <laughs> i'm trying different things out uh but yeah that's it for this one definitely like and subscribe if you found this useful or enjoyed this feel free to drop a comment if you feel like i missed anything and i'll see you in the next one